If I make the ask at that, that'll set the stage for how I'm going to do in the year. I, I plan for that um, from the fall, from the older horses I bring to the two-year-olds to go. And it's just a beautiful place. It's a magnificent race course. It's almost like it's in the 22nd century, you know, the, the way that they've designed it. And to have the queen and, and uh, you know, all the royals there that are enjoying the races with the procession starting each and every day. And then to have everyone dressed with the top hat and tails and everything. And it's just a really, really special place. And you can feel it's really ingrained in the English and European culture to where you can see centuries of racing. Lady Aurelia down the center in the white and green colors is going away at the end. Lady Aurelia and John Van Askelor, she's won by two or three in great style. Here goes Frankie on undrafted on the far side from Astera Music Master. Undrafted, raise and bow towards the near side, trying to peg him back. Undrafted wins the Diamond Jubilee under Frankie. We give the horses the uh, winter off and we, we bring them back and the majority of them that do go to Ascot, we debut them for the year here at Keeneland in the spring and that will really kind of center down as to which ones are going to come over. And fortunately this year we've got a couple of the older horses coming back. Golden Pal. That's my buddy. If ever I brought a horse to a race, that I'm not worried if they come from China or Australia or Zimbabwe, it's Golden Pal. I mean, it doesn't matter who comes, is in the gates with that horse on that day. He's the definitely by far and away, for me, the fastest horse on the planet Earth. He's right, the best right, I've right. ever had. Golden Pal broke like a rocket. There he goes up to a two length early lead right away. But it is Golden Pal, Golden Pal, wire to wire in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. When we work the horses in the morning, especially down in Florida, we'll identify which surface they prefer. And it's like a, a fish to water, you know, you can see that just, you put them on the grass and they have an effortless sort of stride to them on the grass and, and the ones that don't, don't. They just don't take to it as easy as, as some of the others. So it's just visually watching the, the breezes and how they move on the grass and how they move on the dirt. It's an old adage what a lot of the old trainers say that, you know, they're daisy clippers to where they, they barely pick their feet off the ground. Those will be the ones that primarily will be the grass horses. This is Campanelle. She won the last two years over there at Ascot. Campanelli doing quite well on the far side with Sacred now. And these two are the leaders from Sardinia, Sunset, Caroline Dale. But Campanelli has done it the hard way here and wins the Queen Mary. She won her comeback race here, a stake called the Giants Causeway. And she won beautifully. Like, oh, I'd say it's probably the best race she's ever run. So she's going to be going into Ascot in exactly how we want to see her. Dragon symbol on the near side, on the far side, Campanelli trying to repeat last year's Queen Mary win. She's digging deep! Campanelli and Dragon symbol, they pass the post together! With sprinters, I really like to have good spacing between the races. So we've got two months, 60 days between starts, which is just perfect for me to where that you can get over that race and then gradually build her back up to ask it because she's going to need every bit of that to win over there. Six furlongs on closing day. So we got an opening day. We're going to start it off with Golden Pal and we close it up with, with this filly.